Terry, what got you interested in interreligious activities, interreligious dialogue, or whatever you describe it as? Uh, when in your life did this become important to you? Give us a little of your personal story on how you started to focus on this. Well, I think for me it's been, uh, uh, I can remember kind of a two-stage two process going through it. I was the son of a Baptist minister, but as long as I can remember, I've always been interested in reading about other religions. And as a, when I was in grade school, actually, uh, junior high, I got interested in Buddhism and started reading uh, Buddhist books, um, some regular Buddhist books, but also some rather esoteric Tibetan Buddhist books. And um, I just was fascinated with that, and that was the first stage, just that interest, that curiosity. What, whatever uh, someone would believe was always very interesting. To at, me. That, at that time in your life, were you being transgressive to be reading as a Bas <laughs> Baptist, Buddhist uh, I, I, literature? My father was not just a, a minister, he was also a, a professor. So he believed in education. So as long as he thought this was education, which it was, I guess, in a way, he, he was okay with it. My mother was a little more nervous, <laughs> and uh, it was a bit of a stretch for her. But I never lost that. In fact, when I decided uh, on, uh, after I got done with college and then I went to divinity school, uh, and then I wanted to go to graduate school and get a PhD so I could become a professor like my father. And uh, then I had to decide what to focus on, what to study, and I decided, well, religion is so interesting to me, why not study that? So I did it a bit selfishly, but also I did it because uh, I was convinced at that time that this was an issue that was going to become increasingly important for the conservative churches that I and my family uh, worshipped in. Uh, we pretty much had the idea that anyone of another religion was lived somewhere over in Africa in a little village. And uh, we hadn't quite got it yet that uh, the religions are everywhere and increasingly they're in every culture. So that was the first step, kind of an interest and in educational step. But then, uh, w when it came time in my graduate program to do dissertation research, I went and lived in Sri Lanka for two years, two and a half years actually. Studied Buddhist monks, that was my official project, was I wrote a dissertation on Buddhist monasticism. But in the process of that, I took this second leap, I guess, because I met a lot of Buddhists, and I went to a lot of temples and I observed a lot of worship, and I talked to a lot of Buddhist monks, and I talked to a lot of Buddhist lay people. And I realized that aside from the formal situations, the preaching situations, the rituals, the rites, these people were talking about the same things that I had grown up with. They were worried about their kids and what their spiritual destiny was going to be, they were worried about the relationship between what they were taught at the temple and the way they lived their lives and their occupation. And all of a sudden a light went on and I realized, well, they're interested in the same things that the Christians I know are interested in, and they're interested in the same things I'm interested in. They have a, a different set of symbols and a different set of ideas for how they express that. But that's when I became interested in not just religion, but in interreligious dialogue. I realized that when it comes to people of other religions, we have very distinct and marked differences. We believe different things, but we have so much in common. The human religious factor is the same everywhere in the world. And if we would acknowledge that, then we could live with our differences in a much more congenial way, I think. Uh, but we have this tendency to, when we disagree with someone, we want to push it to the limits. We want to say, well, if you believe that, I, 
I can't relate to you, and I don't believe that's true.